Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday evening uh, internet service. Uh, here at Faith Baptist Church. We're glad that you're joining us tonight, and it's good to be with you. We are obviously still in the middle of the coronavirus crisis here that has our uh, nation and world gripped right now, and uh, this is what we have come up with for our church uh, during these times. We are doing a live stream on Sunday mornings for now, and then we are releasing preaching uh, videos on Sunday night, Wednesday night, so that we can keep up the habit of being in the Word of God and worshiping God on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. It's I think it's important that we not lose sight of the basics while we're going through this trial. So uh, this is what our church is doing, and uh, we're asking God to bless it and use it. So uh, tonight, I am not preaching a a specialized message that will be, you know, about the coronavirus or anything that we're going through right now. Uh, if we were meeting together, if tonight were just a regular church service where we were all together, uh, this is what I would have been preaching on tonight. On Wednesday nights here at Faith Baptist Church, we're going through the 11th chapter of Hebrews. And uh, the 11th chapter of Hebrews is all about the subject of faith. But faith is taught in a very concrete way in Hebrews 11. It's not taught in an, like an academic, abstract sort of a way, but it's taught in a very practical way. God showed us how people who lived by faith, how they did that. And so there's, a, there's examples given, and so that's what this chapter is all about. So our series title is called By Faith, By Faith. And there are a number of individuals here who are pointed out uh, who are said to be individuals that live by faith. Now, we've covered three of them, and uh, so we're kind of through the first wave, and now we're starting the second group, okay? Uh, the first wave was we found that uh, Abel worshipped by faith. Abel worshipped by faith. He gave the right kind of sacrifice that God asked for, and so he worshipped by faith. And we talked about that several weeks ago then. The second individual we looked at was um, uh, Enoch, and we talked about the fact that Enoch walked by faith. Enoch walked by faith because he walked with God. And then last week we looked at the life of Noah, and we talked about how Noah worked by faith. Noah was, of course, the, the builder of the ark, and uh, so we talked about working by faith. And, and that's a real good thing to keep in mind, those three things. We're supposed to be worshiping by faith, walking by faith, and working by faith, okay? God expects all three things in our lives. He expects a walk out of us. He expects worship out of us. And don't forget, He expects work out of us. And of course, it's all done by faith. Then, tonight we're going to look at the life of Abraham. And we're going to look at Abraham began by faith. We're going to look at beginning by faith. And then next week, we'll look at some of the other patriarchs. And we'll talk about blessing by faith. And then we'll come to the life of Noah, and we'll talk about uh, bearing by faith. So you can kind of see the rhythm that this is taking on. Worship by faith, walk by faith, work by faith, then beginning by faith, blessing by faith, and bearing by faith out of uh, the lives of the patriarchs and Moses. But tonight we're going to look at the first patriarch, Abraham. And uh, so if you have your Bible handy, look at Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, we'll begin in verse number 8, beginning in verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place where he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Though through Sarah, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one as him as good as dead, so being as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith 
not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Well, that's what Hebrews chapter 11 has to say about the life of Abraham. Abraham uh, was a great example of, uh, of a man living by faith. His entire life, where we pick up his story in the Bible, uh, at least the latter portion of his life was almost entirely uh, characterized by a man living by faith. Now, that doesn't mean that Abraham was a perfect man. That doesn't mean that at times he didn't stumble. But boy, you read the life of Abraham and you read a man whose life was characterized by exercising faith daily. And Abraham's an interesting guy because uh, so many of the things he was called to do, he was the first one called to do them. And so that's why I'm calling tonight Beginning by Faith. So many things that we have today can be traced back to their start being in the life of, of Abraham. In fact, the Bible goes so far as to say in verse 13... These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. What this means is, is that everybody who's ever walked by faith, everybody that's ever done anything that required them to believe God by faith for what they were attempting to do, is in the uh, family lineage of Abraham. We all have that in common. Everybody who's ever done anything for God by faith, where they just couldn't see the end, but they knew they were supposed to go, the Bible says, just like Abraham sought a country, you're seeking a country when you're walking with God by faith. Some of the things that Abraham was asked to do... Uh, that some of the things God told Abraham to do by faith. Number one, he told Abraham to move a great distance by faith. He was told to move a great distance. Abraham lived in Ur of the Chaldees, uh, and God said, I want you to move from Ur of the Chaldees uh, into the land of Canaan. Now, that was a move of many hundreds of miles, and uh, that was not an easy thing in the ancient world. And, uh, and Abraham did that even though he had never been where God was telling him to go. I mean, Abraham's home was in Ur of the Chaldees. His grocery store was in Ur of the Chaldees. His bank was in Ur of the Chaldees. His job was in Ur of the Chaldees. His friends were in Ur of the Chaldees. His neighbors were in Ur of the Chaldees. And God said, I want you to pack everything up. And in the ancient world, this wasn't a very common thing to do. And I want you to move hundreds of miles away into the land of Canaan and I want you to do it by faith. And guess what Abraham did? Abraham did just that. Not only was he asked to move to move a great distance, he was asked to father a great. Uh, he was asked to father a child in his old age. Uh, that didn't make any sense to Abraham, and yet God asked him to do it, and Abraham was willing to do it uh, by faith. Not only was he asked to move a great distance and father a child in old age, but he was then asked to sacrifice that same child and take him up. On Mount Moriah, Genesis chapter 22 tells us that God commanded Abraham to take Isaac, his only son, and take him up Mount Moriah and lay him on an altar and kill him and offer him as a sacrifice unto God. And, and, uh, and, and ultimately, God stopped Abraham short of killing his son, but Abraham obeyed God completely and was willing even to give his only begotten son uh, back unto the Lord. So Abraham was a man of astounding and amazing faith. And here in our passage this evening, we see several things about the faith of Abraham. I want to give you four thoughts tonight, of, if I could, about the faith of Abraham. Some of these overlap with what we've already talked about. 
Listen, the faith of Abraham was similar to the, eighth, uh, the faith of Abel. The faith of, of Abraham was similar to the faith of Enoch. The faith of Abraham was similar to the faith of Noah. And so it's not like uh, Abel and Noah and Enoch and Moses and Abraham and all these individuals uh, had different uh, things they were believing in. They all believed in the same God and in the Word of that God. And so uh, there are similarities and there's going to be overlapping in t- during this entire series. But I want to give you four things that really jump out at us about the faith of Abraham. Number one, first of all, we see that Bible faith, because I'm going to call Abraham's faith Bible faith, okay? It's not just Abraham's faith, it's faith that you can have and it's faith that I can have, okay? So number one, Bible faith is principled. Bible faith is principled. When we were speaking of Noah, if you remember the sermon on Noah, if you don't, if you didn't hear it, it was last Wednesday night's sermon. Uh, So you can go back in our YouTube catalog and look that one up. But one of the things we said about Noah's faith is we said faith always involves an object. Faith always involves an object. When you say you have faith in something, that in something is the object. I think I used the stage as an example during that sermon. I said, "My faith that I'm standing up here on this stage and I'm exercising faith in an object." Now, the object of the faith, the object that my faith is in, is in this stage. Now, I don't know the people that built the stage. I don't know when the stage was built, but here I am. I'm up here standing on it, and I'm putting my faith in the object of the stage. So, if faith is believing in something. The in something is the object. Well, when I said faith always has an object about Noah, and now about Abraham, I said faith is always principled. Those two things are very similar. We're basically talking about the same thing. Uh, Abraham's faith had substance. There was an object. There was a reason. Abraham didn't get up one day and say, you know what? I'm getting tired of living in Ur of the Chaldees. I'm sick of this house. I'm tired of these animals. I'm tired of this land. I'm tired of these neighbors. I'm tired of my job. I think I'd like to see the world. I'm going to move to the land of Canaan. That's not what happened. Abraham wasn't sitting around one day at the age of 75 and, and saying, you know what, there, you know, things have been pretty quiet around here lately. I think Sarah and I are going to attempt to have a child. That's not what happened. It wasn't Abraham's idea to have a child. And surely once Isaac was born, it wasn't Abraham's idea to take Isaac up Mount Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice. All of these things were God's idea. And so that's what we mean when we say Bible faith is principled. All faith has an object, and Abraham's faith was grounded in, It was built upon the foundation of the principle of God's Word. It wasn't Abraham's idea to move to Canaan. It wasn't Abraham's idea to have a child. It wasn't Abraham's idea to sacrifice that child. Abraham's faith was grounded in principle. In verse number 8, I think the key word in verse number 8 is the word called. Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should uh, after receive for inheritance obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Notice the importance of the word called. Abraham didn't decide to move to Canaan. It wasn't his idea, but when God called him, that's when his faith was put into action. That's when he obeyed. And so, friend, I'm here to tell you this, this, after, this evening that Bible faith is principled faith. Um. I ask you not tonight to have faith in Faith Baptist Church. I ask you not not tonight to have faith in the deacons of the Faith Baptist Church, although I believe them to be good men. I don't think they'd lead you astray, but uh, our faith isn't built in them. I ask you tonight to not have faith in Pastor Matt Hinkle. Now, uh, I I love you. I'm your pastor. I want to be your your spiritual leader, and I always want to lead you right and tell you right and shoot it straight with you. But at the end of the day... Uh, your faith isn't supposed to be in me. I, I, I have within myself the potential to let you down. But I'm going to tell you this, this evening that our faith can always be put 
in the written Word of God, we can have confidence in that, and we can trust it absolutely and with absolute certainty. So Bible faith is principled faith. Abraham obeyed and was willing to go where he never went before because he believed in the principle of God's Word. He believed in the principle of God's Word. So is your faith principled tonight? All right, number two, the second thing here is Bible faith is persuaded. Bible faith is persuaded, number two. The word persuaded is actually used in the text. In verse 13, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them. I heard many years ago this statement made about faith, and I don't remember the name of the preacher that, uh, that said this, but I heard this in a sermon. A preacher's, and I believe it's to be true. I never have forgotten the statement. I forgot who said it, but I haven't forgotten the statement. And the statement goes like this. Genuine faith is persuasion without proof. Genuine faith is persuasion without proof. Um, Abel did not say, God, show me how the blood of this lamb, show me how the blood of this innocent sacrifice uh, uh, brings about the forgiveness of my sin and gives me a relationship with you. He just did it. God didn't show him how it works. He just told him what to do and Abel did it. Noah didn't say, Lord, before I build the ark, I need to see an example of what a flood looks like. I need to see an example of what rain looks like. I need you to show me something. That's not how faith works. Faith is persuasion without proof. Now, I don't believe it's persuasion without any substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, I believe the Christian faith is a reasonable faith. I believe God has given us reasonable evidence uh, to begin our walk of faith, and then we can trust Him with what we can't yet see. But my friend, listen, faith... Uh, if, it, if, it's, if it requires proof, is no faith at all. In verse number 8, the Bible says that he obeyed not knowing whither he went. In verse number 11, we see a wonderful statement about faith. In verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. In other words, Sarah could not understand how her and Abraham could have a son, but she believed that they would have a son, and she was willing to keep trying to have a son because she was persuaded. She judged that God who had made the promise was faithful to deliver on the promise. So my friend, you say, Brother Matt, what does it mean to live by faith? Well, number one, Bible faith is principled. Number two, Bible faith is Persuaded. That's a little bit about what it means to, to have faith. Now, number three, a third thing we see here is that Bible faith is occasionally pressured. It is occasionally pressured. Now, remember when we were talking about Noah last week, I made this statement. I said, faith always involves an obstacle. The obstacle of faith is the unknown. It's the unseen. Now, listen, God has showed us many things that help us to get started with our walk of faith. I mean, look, God gives us confirmations almost daily that He's real. He gives us confirmations almost daily that His promises are true, but He doesn't show us the whole picture, does He? He just doesn't. I mean, that's just the reality. When God tells you to do something... It takes faith to do the thing that God told you because He's never going to show you the whole picture. And that's what we meant when we said that Noah had a great obstacle to his faith. In verse number 7, it says, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear and prepared an ark. Every time Noah swung the hammer, every time Noah uh, uh, had the stroke of the saw, every time Noah completed a part of the ark, 
He was doing so having never seen a flood. And yet he, keep, he kept on moving. And I told you last week that one of the hardest things you'll ever do in life is keep moving on something when it doesn't look like it's working. You say, Brother Matt, I'm trying to keep my home together, but everything I do, none of it seems to be working. I just feel like I'm walking in the dark here. You say, I'm trying to be faithful with God to God with my finances, but it just doesn't seem to be working. I've been, I've been obeying God for a little while now, and I haven't seen an immediate turnaround in my finances. Or maybe you're in a ministry, and you say, I'm preaching, but nobody's coming out to listen to me preach. I've started a church, but nobody, we haven't won anybody yet. I'm going to tell you one of the hardest things in life is to keep doing something you believe in when you don't see an immediate reward. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. What, what that is, is just like Noah experienced and just like Abraham experienced, Bible faith is going to be occasionally pressured. If you think you're going to live your whole life walking by faith and it's never going to be challenged and it's never going to be pressured, you got another thing coming. In verse number 8, it says that Abraham obeyed, but he didn't know where he was going. He couldn't see it. That was pressure on his faith. I guarantee you that those that traveled with him probably thought, you are out of your mind. And they may have griped every mile of the journey as they traveled into the land of promise. But Abraham let none of that pressure stop him. He continued to move by faith, not only in verse number 8, but we see pressure in verse number 17. He says in verse 17, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Now, I think it's interesting that it says he offered up Isaac. Now, if you know your Bible and you've read Genesis 22, you know that he didn't kill Isaac, did he? And yet the Bible speaks of it in past tense as though he did it. Well, what that means is, is Abraham's heart was fully committed to obeying God, so it was as good as done in the mind of God. God knew that Abraham was willing to slay his son Isaac if God told him to, because Abraham was fully persuaded that the promise was going to be carried out in the life of Isaac, so he was willing to offer him, but you better believe that was unimaginable, unimaginable pressure. To Abraham's faith. You say, Brother Matt, I've, I've decided I'm going to begin to look, live by faith. I'm going to begin to make faith a reality in my daily life. Okay, that's good. I'm glad you made that decision. And I'm with you every step of the way. But I'm going to tell you something. Not only did you just sign up for great blessing and great victory, but you just signed up for pressure. And it's going to come. Now, I don't know exactly what God will do in your life. I haven't always been able to anticipate what God's going to do in my, what He has done in my life, but I guarantee you all faith at one time or another is tried. And then the fourth. Bible faith is principled. Bible faith, number two, is persuaded. Number three, Bible faith is occasionally pressured. And then number four, Bible faith is persistent. Persistent. Cain decided he was going to offer something different. And he may have laughed at Abel's offering, but Abel persisted in his faith. Enoch witnessed the deterioration of society. He watched society decline into wickedness that ultimately would lead to the flood, but he walked with God, and I'm sure people laughed and I'm sure people said, what in the world's wrong with Enoch? Why isn't he running with us? Why isn't he doing our thing? And Enoch walked with God, and Enoch persisted. I'm sure that Noah was mocked and ridiculed and made fun of, and I'm sure he was questioned over and over again, and I'm sure that maybe he even questioned what he was doing, building this enormous boat when it had never rained. And yet he kept working. He persisted. Abraham moved hundreds of miles from Ur of the Chaldees into the land of Canaan. He, he told everybody that he was going to be the father of a great nation, even though he was an old man. And then when that child finally arrived, he decided that he would take him up to Mount Moriah and offer him there as a sacrifice. And I'm sure to the scorn of the world. And yet he persisted. In verse number 8, it says that he obeyed. 
In verse number 9, it says that he sojourned. In verse number 10, it says that he looked. Friend, he persisted. He persisted. Even when his faith was pressured, he persisted. What about you tonight? What about you? What's it going to take to make you quit? You say, oh, Brother Matt, I went to an altar and I said, I surrender all, Lord. I, I gave myself to God. I said that I would do whatever God wants me to do. Friend, what's it going to take you to come back off that promise? What's it going to take to cause you to, to, to back off of that commitment, to back off of that, uh, uh, what you decided you would do for the Lord Jesus Christ? Friend, listen, Bible faith, number one, is principled. Bible faith, number two, is, uh, is, is, is uh, persuaded. Number three, it's pressured. But number four, thank God, it's persistent. You can be persistent. You say, Brother Matt, how do you know I can be persistent? Because Abel was persistent. And Enoch was persistent. And Noah was persistent. And Abraham was persistent. And you and I can be persistent too in our faith. Would you bow with me tonight with a word of prayer? We're going to close in a word of prayer. It's been great to be with you. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Feel free to reach out to me if you need to at all. But we're praying for you at this time. And I hope that very soon we'll be able to meet together again in the building. But until that day, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be together like this. Let's pray as we dismiss tonight. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness. And God, we thank you that we can have the opportunity to put our faith and trust in you. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but help us to lean upon you and put our full, the full weight of our trust on you, Lord. And I pray that you would help us to be persistent in the face of pressure. And we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.